Hi, my name is Yasmin Shamma. I hold an international research grant from the British Academy, the UK's Voice for Social Sciences and the Humanities. The grant I hold supports the creation of a digital archive called Making Home Away. I've been working on this website with Dr. Susan Ilkin and Dr. Vicki Squire, who are the co-investigators on this project, and Dr. Helen Underhill, um, the research assistant. Dr. Squire, Dr. Ilkin, and I have been conducting interviews with Syrian refugees who are living displaced throughout the world. We've been asking them more specifically about the ways in which they make homes away. That is, how do they nest? How do, how do they recreate the comforts of home despite the fact that the spaces in which they live are often temporary liminal spaces? Because my own background is in literary studies, I carry a lot of poems with me in my heart uh, to borrow from E.E. E. Cummings as I have these conversations with Syrian refugees, mostly in Arabic. Um, the poems I think of are mostly in English because that's my own sort of um, professional field of interest, but um, they're also international poems. There's one poem that is international. It's written by Polish writer Adam Zagajewski and translated by Claire Cavanaugh. Um, and it's a poem that I've thought of quite frequently because of its urging us to praise or find things to praise despite the mutilation of the world that surrounds us. So I'm going to share that poem with you today. This poem was written in 2001 and published in the September issue, 2001, in the New Yorker, which means that it was published into carrying a sort of resonance with another global catastrophe. This is Try to Praise the Mutilated World by Adam Zagajewski. Try to praise the mutilated world. Remember June's long days and wild strawberries, drops of rosé wine, the nettles that methodically overgrow the abandoned homesteads of exiles. You must praise the mutilated world. You watched the stylish yachts and ships. One of them had a long trip ahead of it, while salty oblivion awaited others. You've seen the refugees going nowhere. You've heard the executioners sing joyfully. You should praise the mutilated world. Remember the moments when we were together in a white room and the curtain fluttered. Return in thought to the concert where music flared. You gathered acorns in the park in autumn and leaves eddied over the earth's scars. Praise the mutilated world and the gray feather a thrush lost, and the gentle light that strays and vanishes and returns. So that's Try to Praise the Mutilated World by Adam Zagajewski. Now that's written in 2001. Another poem that's been coming to mind quite frequently lately was written in 2015. Um, it's written out of the Black Lives Matter movement by Ross Gay, and it's written speaking to the occasion of Eric Garner's death, who died after uh, explaining that he couldn't breathe for several minutes. It's a strange poem to reach to today, but I think that I might be reaching to it because of its contemporary relevance. Um, and I've been thinking about the ways as I reread the interviews that I've you know, had the honor of conducting um, with these displaced, marginalized subjects of the Syrian migration crisis. I've been realizing how frequently they talk about gardens um, and how often they exhibited this incredible tendency to be resourceful and resilient in the creation of gardens in both these kinds of surrounding spaces of tents and caravans and also in what is inherently a desert, that is, these refugee camps are in Jordan, a desert land. One specific refugee comes to mind frequently um, she explained that on her first day in the refugee camp, she was offered a peach by a relief worker. And after she had eaten the peach, she planted its pit. And as she was planting its pit, her neighbor kind of jokingly mocked her and said, um, seems like you mean to stay a while. To which she responded, well, I hope I'm not staying a while, but if I am, at least I'll have a beautiful peach tree to look at and beautiful peaches to eat. And if I'm so lucky as to get to leave in a few weeks, then this tree will grow and one day it might create a space for a bird 
to plant a nest and then a home. Um, and it's this like thinking about the whole earth that really stuck with me. And I think it's what's sticking with me as I read and reread a small needful fact and uh, try to make sense of contemporary events. So this is a small needful fact by Ross Gay. It's a short poem, it's 15 lines, and I should say that it has a lot of commas in it, which encourage the reader to take a lot of breaths. So pardon me as I breathe through it. A small needful fact by Ross Gay. A small needful fact is that Eric Gardner worked for some time for the Parks and Rec Horticulture Department, which means perhaps that with his very large hands, perhaps in all likelihood, he put gently into the earth some plants, which most likely, some of them in all likelihood, continue to grow, continue to do what such plants do, like house and feed, small and necessary creatures, like being pleasant to touch and smell, like converting sunlight into food, like making it easier for us to breathe. Thanks for listening today.